Hey guys from Doha, Qatar, and today I'm I have a very exciting day. I've got two lessons with Edwina Tops, who is a very very good show jumper. She does some real big courses. She is one of the best show jumpers in the world, and I can't believe she's going to be teaching me. I'm going to be riding two horses. Uh, I rode one yesterday so I could get a bit of a feel for her and then another one today so I can get a brand new one. I haven't rode him before um, and I'm going to get a feel for him today and hopefully I'll be jumping a little bit bigger than my hard average. Um, I haven't jumped either of the horses that I'm going to be jumping today. Um, I think I'm going to take it a bit smaller today. Um, I want to jump bigger but I don't want to be jumping absolutely huge because it's my first day jumping them. So maybe today I want to jump about 80 or 90, um, but by the end of the trip, I want to be jumping over a meter. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but one of the horses I'm going to be riding today is called a Clintest, and she's such a lovely mare. She's a dapple gray. She's gorgeous. Um, she's one of my favorites in Qatar. I've never ever 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 jumped a horse before. I've only ever jumped ponies. So this is a huge difference for me. Um, but I just can't wait to I can't wait to be on them. I can't wait to be riding today. Edwina is amazing and I'm so grateful to be having a lesson with her and I just can't believe that I am having a lesson with her. She's such an amazing and inspiring rider. First I'm gonna have lunch with Edwina and I'm gonna ask her a few questions that I've been dying to ask um, and then we're gonna get head to the yard and I'm gonna start my jumping lessons. Today I'm here with Edwina Tops, who is a professional show jumper, and I'm going to ask her a couple questions before we have our lesson today. <laughs> so I've got some here. Um, let's start off with, what age did you start riding? I started riding when I was eight. Oh, wow. Mm, my parents were not from a horse background family really? at all. Yes. And my neighbors had ponies. Oh, okay. And um, so we had like this little Pinto called Bojangles that was four, not broken in, and he used to escape into our place because our grass was a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to just get on him in the morning. I didn't know what I was doing. He had a head collar and I would put a rope around him and I'd sit on him and then um, my parents figured that this could be, you know, dangerous. So, <laughs> so I started having lessons and then I went to Pony Club. Oh, wow. Yeah. Started from there. I did, and here I am. <laughs> what age did you start competing? Well, that's a good question. So I went to Pony Club when I was eight, and then I learnt a lot then. Like we did yeah. like the Jamborees and the Prince Philip Games we had. Yeah. Um, and I was super competitive. I had some fantastic, I had two very good ponies that I used to win a lot on. Yeah. And then I stopped Pony Club when I was 15 and then I got okay. some I got some really bad horses. Oh. And I had a lot of accidents. I oh. fell off a lot. I got a little bit afraid. Um, I I was a bit of a clown because <laughs> I kept falling off. I, I, I remember having lessons and my mum filming and looking back I was falling off three or four times on the lessons. And then finally when I was 18 I got some better horses. Okay. And then things started to change. Okay. <laughs> so, next question. Did you always know you loved show jumping or did you love dressage too? So, I figured that, you know, when I was at Pony Club, I tried everything. Yeah. I think that's the best way to go. Yeah. And I tried everything also when I was at school. Yeah. I was doing gymnastics, tennis, swimming, piano, and riding. And then everything kind of fizzled down. Yeah. <laughs> so I did eventing, which I, okay. I absolutely loved. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't so keen on the dressage. Okay. I think at that time there wasn't so many people around me doing dressage, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and, and I loved the jumping. Yeah. And then I just, I think when I was about 15, I did also we, hacking. Yeah. They have hacking also in the UK, yeah. So I did all that showing and everything, which I loved. I loved plaiting the horses, getting yeah. them ready, making them look beautiful. But I don't know, I just, I loved going fast <laughs> and I loved jumping. Yeah. And I just felt like it was a fair sport for me. Yeah. 
And that's what kind of intrigued me a bit more. So I decided when I was 15, I think I'm going to jump. So then I stopped swimming. Oh, okay. I did gymnastics for a few more years. I was never very good at tennis. I could hit the ball just in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, what else? And gymnastics, yeah, I did for another year. And then I just figured that that was the best thing that I was doing. Yeah. And so I decided to continue with it. Do you ever feel nervous about jumping really big? Because like, I know I definitely do when I'm jumping a little bit bigger than the usual average day <laughs> on popcorn. Yeah, look, I think it's something that you have to slowly build yourself into. Yeah. And there's a lot of mindset there. And I think when you've got the right feeling with the, with the pony or with the horse, mm -hmm. you know, you can slowly build yourself and gradually go bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So I remember when I did my first World Championships. Yeah. And I remember thinking the night before, my gosh, am I going to be able to actually go in the ring and <laughs> perform? What's going to happen to me on this day? I really <laughs> did. And, um, and I think sometimes you've got to overcome the fears, you know? Yeah. And you've just got to try it and, and believe in it. It's really important. Definitely. You know, and when you build that special relationship with your pony or with your mm. horse, you know, you feel much more secure. You do. So, yeah, so I think taking your time and sometimes you have to drop back again. Yeah. And build yourself back up again. And, you know, I was only talking yesterday when I was doing the clinic, you know, and I said I probably had more bad rounds than good rounds. Everyone does. Yeah. And I think those rounds are the rounds that actually, you Count. know, build your You've got to make every mistake in the book to make no mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So the next question is, any advice for anyone wanting to push themselves and start jumping bigger? So the advice I can give is take your time, build a really good relationship with your horse or your pony. Yeah. You know, feel that you're ready to jump bigger. Yeah, definitely. Don't go into something feeling like you can't, you know, and um, you've got to be very sure in your mind that um, you can do this that you can do this yeah and you've got to practice at home yeah sometimes what's really good is going to like some small training places or other yeah. people's places different environment you know mm. so you get a little bit that feeling of being on a show or a training show um, and I think knowing your horse or your pony really well is super important building yeah. a good bond with them and sometimes you have to step back again to go back up again so yeah just um, going up and down slowly like it's a um, you know sort of a, a bit of a pyramid effect that you can just you know two steps forward maybe one step back three steps yeah. forward gradually like this um, and then also I think one of the things that I do is which has really helped me a lot um, is when I've had a bad round, yeah. for example, and I've got to go out the next day and jump the Grand Prix on the same horse. Yeah. So those are the moments when you've got to toughen up and you've got yeah. to say, okay, I've done this before. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to look at all the good rounds Yeah. and I'm going to just visualize those rounds, put those rounds into my mind and just go in there with a clear mind. Yeah. Forget about what's happened and move forward and often you'd be surprised at how yeah how uh, how good you can achieve your results <laughs> do you ever like think in your mind when you're jumping those big grounds or when you're approaching a jump that you're not fond of do you what do you say to yourself yeah so so i have a bit of a system mm -hmm. yeah so i walk the course i have a way of walking the course and a way of walking the lines and i know my particular horse so i know how i'm going to warm up and what happens is with me is I know when I come in the ring, if I can hear something after the bell's gone, then I'm not focused. So then I have to <laughs> shake myself up and say, okay, now just get with it, you know? Because I've had times when I'm not focused and I've been listening to things going on outside and then I get distracted and that's when I make mistakes. So for me, what's really important is <clears throat> that I'm sure when I go in the ring that I'm yeah. focused. Um, and that I've gone through the plan many times in my head. Yeah. So what, what happens is when I come in the ring, it just becomes automatic. I think that's a special, like a relationship you have to build with your horse over time. Yeah. That the horse feels that for sure they feel when you're nervous, you know. So, yeah. you know, you've got that horse to give you confidence and you've got to give the confidence to the horse. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a good, strong sort of relationship that you have to have. I, I know when I'm riding a horse that's been a bit naughty or one that's stopped or, you know, I know I've got to ride a bit different. So yeah. I'm kind of the person that when things don't go right, it drives me 
stronger to make it go right, you know. Yeah. So I get more, um, you know, stronger from that sometimes, and um, and I think that's what gets me very confident. Yeah. You know, and I think I've had so many experiences and so many bad experiences. Yeah. That I can look back and I know that I've been able to get through those experiences. It's so important to just know your horse the best you can. Um, because otherwise you don't know what they're going to react to. Mm, absolutely, yeah. I think that that takes time to build that sort of relationship with your horse. And, yeah. and <clears throat> competing experience is the only way really that you can s consolidate those relationships with the horses and build on top of those, you know, those yeah. good times that you've had, yeah. So the next question is, what does a normal day look like for you back at home? And how many horses do you ride per day? So it depends because I travel a lot. Yeah. Um, when I'm riding, I would be riding between, I'd say, four to six a day. Okay. Probably less now than I used to when before I had yeah. Chloe. <laughs> um, I probably used to ride about eight a day. Okay, wow. Mm. So now I ride four to six, um, yeah. depending a little bit on, on my time. I, if I can, I'm finished around lunchtime. Yeah. And if not, I'll ride a couple more in the afternoon. Um, and um, yeah, so I'd start on the first horse around eight o'clock. Okay, oh, um, so it's quite early. Yeah, eight o'clock, and then um, and then try to be done around yeah lunchtime or two o'clock. Yeah. Mm. So last but not least, we have what's the biggest you've ever jumped as like a single? <laughs> um, I have to confess, I've never done a puissance. Oh, so oh okay. That's not on my bucket list. So no. <laughs> you won't be seeing me doing that. Um, I, I haven't really had the horse to do it, to be quite honest. I'd probably like to do it, but I just, it's a bit old fashioned now and there's not many shows that do it. Um, so yeah. I have not jumped that wall. Um, but like at home, what's the mm, biggest you've jumped? Probably, I'd say one meter 80. Oh, wow. <laughs> one meter 80 spreads. Um, okay. And maybe 165, 170 high, yeah. Oh my but I don't, gosh. I don't jump very big at home. You know, I don't, I don't train. Over jump. No, I don't. I, first, I don't jump a lot at home. I do a lot of, yeah. a lot, lot of flat work. That's for me the most important thing. That's yeah. key. Um, and I think obviously when you have a new horse, you know, learning that horse, so you do have to jump yeah. probably a bit more. But I don't jump too big at home. It, it also really depends on the horse, and a lot depends on the program of the horse. How many times do you jump your horses in a normal week? So if I have a show like back to back, yeah. unless I don't feel like, you know, if, if they haven't jumped particularly well, I might give them a jump before the yeah. show, but um, I wouldn't jump them normally. Um, yeah. But if there's like a weekend in between, I would probably jump them just one time. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe do a little exercise or something, but yeah. not too much. I think too much jumping is not good for them, um, but I think it depends how your last show went. So going off yes. how the last show went and, you know, if you, maybe if you did a jump off, for example, really yeah. fast, you might, might want to jump a few lines that are short to just to get your horse sitting again and waiting again and keep the horse patient and relax. Because sometimes if you go, you know, in the course, the next course after you've gone like really fast, the horses are a bit forward and a bit flat. So just yeah. to set them again up and <clears throat> to get the right ability better and just to feel how they are. and. So yeah. it really depends on the competition schedule for the particular horse, but I don't jump too much, yeah. What's been your biggest achievement or your most memorable achievement in your career? Oh, um, good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I would have to say, I mean, I've had some amazing experiences on Totti. Um, he's for sure been my best horse. Yeah. And the horse I've had the longest on the highest level. Um, possibly Prague, winning in Prague, um, in 2018, the Super Grand Prix. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it was, it was one of the toughest Grand Prix I've jumped. Yeah. Um, so Wait, what height's that? That's, uh, like 160. Oh, 165. wow. 165, yeah. So that was like all the Grand Prix winners from the Global Champions Tour were going there. Um, there oh was, I think, 16 of us. I was the only female. And um, I was, there was only two of us clear in the first round. And then for the second round, um, everybody came back. The, the rider before me who was clear fell off. So I was the only clear. Oh no. But I didn't really, I couldn't really follow what was going on the rest of the class. So yeah. I really thought my horse was gonna jump clear and I was halfway round and my horse had one down. 
and then no. all of a sudden, yeah, I had to change the course. I had to take out strides everywhere. I had to do inside turns, and I'd miss one turn before that. And you know, and I had to keep my cool. And um, anyway, I, I won by like 0.08 of a second. Oh my um, god! And it was, I think, I don't know, 30,000 people in the stadium. So it was a full house. And um, I, I didn't know I'd won it actually at the time because I was trying Did to look at the screen. And you know, everyone was clapping, but I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if they were clapping because I was second or if I. <laughs> I didn't really know at the time. Um, so it took me like half a lap to realize that I had actually won. And um, yeah, it was definitely one of the toughest Grand Prix I've ever ridden. So. Oh my God. It was a, a good experience. Yeah. Do you ever get nervous going into the ring? Yeah. So, I'm, I'm quite a laid-back kind of person. Maybe it's yeah. the Aussie, you know, vibe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, which I think is a great thing to have because yeah. um, because I definitely benefit from that. Um, but it also sometimes I have to be careful. I don't get too complacent. So yeah, um, too I have chill. to yeah too chill and not focus. You know mm. and and you know so I have to actually kind of. It's good that I get a little bit nervous because it yeah. keeps me focused. It revs me up a little bit. Um, it gets me more competitive, um, mm. but in a good way. You yeah. know, in a good way. I mean, I've 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 um, I've definitely had moments for sure when I've been really nervous. Um, but I, I think it works good for me. So um, I think it's it's normal. Yeah. Um, it's good for you to, to be like that to a yeah. certain level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to take the positives out of it. When I go in the ring, I just pray that my horse doesn't refuse. Yeah. <laughs> because I know popcorns are never going to knock them down. Yeah. Especially if they're like 70, whatnot. Um, I know he's not going to knock them down. I just I feel like. He can put a dirty stop in here and there. Yeah. And it's just getting that confidence to say, no, let's, we're going over it. And I remember we were doing a clear round once and it, it was just like, I think it was 80. And Popcorn did not like the butterfly wings. <laughs> so he was like, I'm not fond of them. I'm <laughs> not jumping this. But I, I circled round and then, because it was a clear round, it's not, it, you don't get placed. Yeah. So I circled round and just like, a full pelted at it so because yeah. it's harder for them to stop when they're going like a million miles per hour <laughs> yeah so i was just like we're going over this yeah whether you like it or not yeah i think what's really important is that they feel secure you know yes so it's very important if you feel that they're nervous yeah. i think it's very important i always say it's like a car if you drive a car and you take your hands off the wheel it doesn't know where it's going right yeah so same with a bike. So I think it's very important that they feel you, you there, even if you don't go fast, but you've, you're sitting a little bit back, but you've got them between the hand and leg. That, yeah. that, you, that you've got the leg on them, you've got them in front of you, you've got them in the bridle and you keep them secure and then they get confident from that. And then you don't have to ride that fast because sometimes, okay, if you ride fast, you've got to make sure you've got them between the hand and leg. Because I find sometimes yeah. if you do ride them too fast, they can get all of a sudden a bit nervous because yeah. they get a bit like, what's going on now? You know, because you've been riding everywhere around nice and then all of a sudden you ride fast. So I think there's a good balance to that. And, and you know your horse better than anyone. Yeah. So you know that that works good for him. So I'm just about to start my lesson with Edwina and I'm lovely, I'm, I'm riding the lovely mare, Clindhurst. I rode her yesterday, she's super, super, super nice to ride and she's absolutely gorgeous. She's got lovely dapples. You're a very sweet girly, aren't you? She's literally like a unicorn and this arena is fully air conditioned as well so it's nice and cool in here for the horses when they work. All right, so what I'm going to get you to do is just ride around. I'm going to keep an eye on you and I'm going to give you some tips. And then we're going to count around a little bit and then we're going to do a small course. And I'm going to try to help you as much as I can. Going to do the best we can, right? Yep. Good. She'll fizz up though once we're yeah, yeah, jumping yeah. because we were only doing pole work yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now yeah. we're doing jumping. So you might be a bit fizzy. One more there. Good. So make sure she's in front of your leg and that you've got a consistent feeling all the time. It's very important that she feels your support. She's a little bit short in the neck, right? Yeah. So we've just got to get that neck a little bit out. Not that she's with her head up, sort of looking back. That's it. Good. So try to 
keep always a feeling of your outside rein and then give and take with the inside rein to try to get her to, to get a little bit deeper, a little bit longer. There you go. Good. Good. And don't let go of the outside rein. Keep the leg on. Always feel that rein. Good. A little bit more from the leg forward, yeah? That's it, good. A little more forward, good. Okay, and then when you're ready, you can change direction. You can come through the diagonal. Shoot, diagonal. Good. Very good, nice and balanced, looks good. So see if you can get her neck out a little bit. And what you can do is, you can bend her a little bit to the left, to the, out, to the outside, yeah, good. And then when you feel like, there you go, now take her to the inside. Bend her to the inside and keep your inside leg on her and don't, don't let go of the outside rein. Okay, and then come back to the walk and then just come here, I wanna show you something. Very good, nicely done. So, I wanna show you. So I'm her mouth, right? So you need to be having this constant kind of feel on her, yeah? So if, you, if I'm gonna come, if she comes off the bit, yeah, then she's a bit lost and she's gonna yeah. get shorter in the neck. So, so you gotta have always that, that nice, steady feel on this rein. And then what we'll do is, I'll show you. I'll bend her here. There you go, good. Now she's round and I don't let go of this rein and I just open this inside rein here. Keep hold of it, keep hold of it. And then bend, there you see? Yeah. And then we keep this rein, soften. Yeah, and then you can give her a little pat. But she feels that, don't let go of that rein. There you go, good. And you just gotta keep working on that. So keep your outside rein, yeah? and then bend her inside and keep that inside leg on all the time, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then just try to see, if you, see how low you can get her, her nose, yeah? You could also, yeah, you do it in the walk, it's easier in the trot because you've got her moving from behind, yeah? Good. That's it, good. And then like I always say, it's so much easier to keep them round on the circle because they're already round, yeah? That's it, good, good. I like that. Bend it to the inside. Open your inside rein, like this. Do like that. There you go, good. And then kick her forward. A bit more trot, a little bit more. There you go. Then she trots into the bridle, yeah? Very good. Good girl. Okay, when you're ready, you can pick up the counter. Very good. Good, now just get her a bit in front of your leg. Canter down the long side here. That's it, good. Wake her up a bit, there you go. Okay, don't throw your reins at her. Keep your, keep your legs still. A Little bit more contact with your leg, yeah? Very good, keep going. Get her a little more forward down here. Three strides, four strides forward. And then collect her, bring her back and keep your leg on. Ah, great. Okay, when you're ready, come through the middle and do a change. Good, always looking forward, always looking forward. Wait till you get to the outside. Okay, she did automatic, yeah, good. All right, come back here one sec, I wanna show you something, yeah? Very good. Okay, when you're gonna do a change, yeah? So you don't have to th throw your body, you, you sit straight, yeah? And the best, easiest way for you, you're gonna use that wall, yeah? Because yeah. it's more difficult in the middle, right? So come through here, don't ask her to change, you keep her still on the right lead, right lead, right lead, and then the closer you get, when you're about two strides away here, then you can put your outside leg behind, sit in the saddle, inside leg, and then you ask her to change, yeah? And then you'll get a much easier change, yeah? 
Yeah. She doesn't, she's quite good at a change. She's very good at a changes anyway. Should I try that and again? And try to keep your body still. Yeah, just try that again. Yeah. The more still you are, I know you've got to put your leg on, but the more still you are with your body, then the more focused she's going to be for you. So keep going around. Use the wall, use the wall, wait, 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 sit straight. Now ask. Good, there you go. Very good. I like that. Do the same again. You can come through here. Go on that side of the fence. Yeah, good. Wait, wait, wait. And ask. Don't look down. Good. Very good. You don't look down, okay? One more time again. You keep looking forward. Keep your body still. Now you can ask her. Okay, perfect. One more the other way. Very good. I like that. Very, very good. Patient. Wait. Hold her. Hold her. Hold her. And sit quiet. Outside leg. Good. Okay, great. Okay, walk a minute. Very good. Very good. And then you can sit quiet. And then you wait, you feel her, then you ask her, and then she changes. And then, you know, like if you're in the ring and you're doing that, then they don't get so, you know, you can focus on the next fence, yeah? Yeah. And then you've got a good balance, and then... Um, she's excellent. getting a bit more awake now. She's now waking up, yeah. She's yeah, because she, she knows she's probably getting up. Okay, I'm just going to pop this down a little bit. Because you don't know her, we're just going to do really small to start with, right? Mm-hmm. So, what's really important when you're jumping, super important, is just try to keep everything as smooth as possible. Start off on the right rein, and then I want you to come around and jump this cross, and then on the left rein, jump this one. Just do a canter a circle first to get her in front of your leg. Always make sure she's in front of your leg. That's it, good. Very good. That's okay. That's okay. Don't look down. Don't look down. Feel the leg. Feel the leg. Good. Get her off the shoulder. Keep moving through the turn. That's okay. Okay. Let's just start again. Let's start again. Okay. Just hang on. So what's really important... I was aiming for that jump. That's okay. No problem. That's fine. What's really important is just try to keep your, your nice, smooth rhythm, nice, active and smooth rhythm, yeah? So nice, smooth rhythm, stay forward, don't look down, keep moving. So in the turn there, because what she does is she puts a shoulder like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of hard to get to that fence, but we've got to work with it, right? So try to use that, now you know how she's going to be, right? Try to use that turn there. Instead of her doing that, put this leg on and try to get her like that, if you can, yeah? So get as much as you can in the, in the corners to get her off that shoulder, to get her yeah. back that way, yeah? Because she's just getting excited and she wants to go to the fence. <laughs> yeah. Okay? So let's just do that again. Off the right, pop that, jump that. Even if you do, it doesn't matter. Just see the distance down here and then left turn back over the cross, yeah? That's it, good. That's it. Nice rhythm. Wait, 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 wait. Good. Great. Don't look down. Get the change. Good. Get her off the shoulder. Right rein. Good. Now keep your eye on the fence. There you go. Good. Wait, are going oh, you got to go <laughs> straight ahead. I thought you wanted to move Sorry, to no. your circle. Sorry, no. Jump that. Go straight to this, Oxa. Yeah. Yeah? And then you go around, don't let her fall there. Keep her straight, turn, and then you jump this one, yeah? Cool. <laughs> no problem. Good. Keep moving through the turn, moving through the turn. Perfect, perfect, good. Don't look down, don't look down. That's it, now look at the fence and get her off the shoulder. And go straight ahead. There you go. Good. That's okay. Now look. 
Now look, and keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Perfect. Great. Very good. Okay, back to the walk. Back to the walk. Sit down, walker. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Great. So now you understand her a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Because she just wants to jump everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to do a little bit more of a course. So you did six there, which is, it's not a problem as long as you get the even stride. Mm -hmm. That's no problem. Yeah. That's okay. Don't look down. Don't look down. Now look at the fence. Now look at the fence. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, that was the five. Get it back. Now look at the fence. Now look at the fence. Good. Great. Now this five won't be so long like the last one. Yeah. Ride this a bit slower. That's okay. Okay, get it back. Oh, good. Circle, circle, relax, relax, relax. Good. And get it back. Okay, back to the walk. Oh, good. Okay, all right. So, here you got the five, yeah? But I like that you made a decision, yeah? yeah. So you saw the six was getting a bit difficult? Yeah. So then you did the five. So that's good. I like it when you make a decision and then you go for it. Yeah. yeah? Okay, good. Then here, because you got a bit close. Yes. That's why the five got a bit long. But that's good. You had a very good reaction there. So I like that. Yeah. So if I was in the ring and something like that had happened on this height, I probably would do a six. But because I told you to do the five, then very good. <laughs> okay, we might just do that one more time. Let's try to just keep a smooth rhythm. Let's think about the six there. Let's think about the even five. Don't look down when you ask it to change. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. Good. I want you to ride like that. I want you to wait. Make her wait. Make her wait. Now look. Now look. Make her wait. Make her wait. Wait. Stay quiet. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's okay. Now look. Sit in the saddle. Keep moving through the turn. That's good. Balance. Wait. Wait. Good. Very good. Get her back. Excellent. Now look at the fence. Now look at the fence. Keep moving through the turn. Keep your leg on. There you go. Good. That's okay. Good. Do that last line again. Get it back. Keep riding through the turn. Keep riding through the turn. Look at the fence now. Look at the fence. Keep moving. Keep moving. Get her eye on it. There you go. There you go. Good. One, two. Stay patient. Okay. Exactly the same, but don't push at the end. Stay quiet. You get the five easy, easy. You stay patient. Nice jump and nice follow down there in the five. That's it. Keep a nice rhythm. Good. Keep moving through the turn. Keep moving through the turn. Keep your eye on it. Keep going. There you go. Good. Now don't push. Very good. Okay. Great. Good. Get her back. Oh, good. Okay, very good. Give her a pat. Excellent. Good. Okay, so not knowing them is also not easy because you don't know how yeah. much pressure you've got to put on them and what she's going to do through the turn. And um, Very good. Excellent. Now she's uh, ready. She's a feisty man. <laughs> she's ready, yeah. Excellent. So what's really important is even when like here, like when you see that it might get a bit long, yeah? Mm -hmm. Try to do it a little smoother, yeah? Because mm -hmm. I know sometimes you don't know if she's going to go off the leg, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. 
So now she's a bit more awake, yeah? Now we can just stay a little bit, I know the five was gonna get a bit long, but yeah. if, you, if you try to just do it a little smoother, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, now because it's a bit bigger, the distances will get a bit easier, yeah? Yeah. So they won't ride as long, okay? So what we're gonna focus on is trying to stay smooth. Yeah. Trying to stay balanced. Mm -hmm. Give her time. Give yourself time. And not rushing the fence, yeah? Yeah. Good. Stay in the middle. Perfect, go and push, great. Go and look down. Keep moving through the turn. Keep moving through the turn. Keep coming. There you go. Good. Smooth. One, two, three. Don't push. Don't push. Get it back. Now look at the fence. Balance, balance, balance. Don't push. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, you did six. Uh, five, sorry. Keep coming. Sit up. Balance. Don't let her think she's finished. Wait, wait, good, very good. Okay, nearly perfect, nearly, nearly, nearly perfect. Very good, we're just gonna do that one line again. Yeah. Very good. What, I, like I, I, did I? You did the five, yeah. The but five. like I say, I, I'm very happy if you make a decision and you go for it. Yeah. If you don't make a decision on that moment, you probably would have done a half stride, yeah? Yeah. So off the left, jump this one just to get your rhythm started. Then and get in the turn, get, oh, jump that. Perfect. Don't write, write that like a vertical, like a normal fence. Yeah. And then I want that you nice, smooth balance in the six, okay? Mm -hmm. And at the end, don't push her at the fence, okay? Yeah. Keep your leg on and don't push. That's the trick, good. Keep coming, now look at your jump. Now look at the fence. Keep coming, that's it, stay like that. That's okay, good. Don't look down, get the change. Now look at the fence. Don't push, don't push. Stay relaxed. There you go, don't push, it's okay. Wait, 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 good. Okay, great. Very good. So you see after an oxa, because you were a touch off, which is no problem, then then the six got even more steady. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I started slowing her down, like right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Okay, trot her off a little bit. That was great. And she, you know, she's with you. She looks for the jumps. She's enjoying it. Good, and try to get her to relax now. That's it, good. Very good, she knows she's finished now. <laughs> Great. I can see you on a, riding her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so tell me, what did you learn? What were the to most important things that you learned? Sit and let her ride herself yeah. and me just have a nice time and just not interfere. Yeah, so nice connection, yeah. nice balance, stay quiet at the fence, yeah. yeah. Let her take her time at the fence, yeah. Don't push. Yeah, don't push, keep your leg there. Sometimes you have to push, right? Yeah. Because sometimes you're, you're far off and you've got to push. But yeah. sometimes if you push too early, you get there too quick, yeah. Yeah. And then and with your changes, not looking down, really think about that. Like really, really think about it. Because if you, if, you, if you get it in your mind and you keep doing it, then it becomes habit, yeah? So yeah. really think, just feel, feel her when she's gonna do the change, yeah? Feel her. And just at home, like when you're writing popcorn, you can just also practice like when you do the changes, yeah. sit really quiet with your body, think straight. Get her nicely off the shoulder through the turn. Yeah. You can send me some videos. <laughs> Very Thank good. You. I like it. I think you should be jumping rider. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> got the book now. 
You can do everything. I can do everything. <laughs> hey, you are such a good girl. That we can get. You are. Okay, very good. Excellent. That was great. And if you ever need any, any help with popcorn or you're yeah. doubting something, you can always send me a video and I'm very happy oh. to... Oh my God, I must have looked tiny on her. <laughs> well, you are tiny, but... <laughs> oh, yes, you're very good girl. Thank you so much, Edwina. It is a huge pleasure. That was absolutely amazing. I feel so lucky to have a lesson with Edwina. I finished my lesson on Clinthurst and she was just fabulous. I'm obsessed with that mare because um, she's not too much horse, but she's just that next step from ponies. So she's absolutely amazing. Currently, there's a clinic going um, on in the arena now, but there's going to be one in a couple minutes um, and I'm going to be riding in that one shortly. So I'm super, super intrigued to see because I'm riding a different horse and I didn't pre-ride it the day before, so I got to feel for it. Um, they said it's a bit like Clintus when when you start going, she's a bit, a bit like a turtle, but slow. But when you start jumping, then they're in action. I think I might be jumping a little bit bigger, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this one's a gelding this time and he's Chestnut. I don't know what his name is though, so. I think we're gonna film the clinic as well because um, I feel like it's really, really good that you guys can pick up some tips from her. Um, and also, it's, it's, it'll make the vlog a bit longer for you. Good girl, nice. So we're just heading into the clinic now. Um, we came out here first so I could get a little feel for him and he's absolutely amazing. Um, he's 17, so he's an older boy, but he's still got life left in them bones. But I've had a good little practice now. So hopefully we're all good for the clinic. Hello, we're all warmed up. Good, Ibrahim, very good. So, Ibrahim, we have to work a little bit today. Remember on getting a little bigger canter without getting too long, right? We have to focus on that with you. Yeah? We have to focus on getting a bit more when you canter. Yeah? All right, guys, you can come back to the walk. Hello. You right. are up next. So it's cross to, yep. cross to five or six. Six sides. I want to see six strides there. Balance in the six. So slow over that. Balance in the six. And then give yourself time to pop up here over the pink one. Good. Make sure he's in front of you. Excellent. Great. Very good. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's okay. You got it easier than you thought. Now look at the fence. Don't worry. Keep coming. Keep coming. I don't mind that. Keep coming. Keep coming. Great. Excellent. Okay, so that, that's, that's a good instinct. I, like, I don't mind. I know it's not ideal when they don't change in the turn. He did the same thing here on the left. He didn't want to change, but you got, okay, we had to do the trot. You don't know him so good. And there he didn't want to change. It's not a problem. Whatever happens, you need to just keep riding exactly what you did through the turn. And you get the perfect distance. Very good. Good. Take two. Take your time in the turn.
I'm all done now guys and I must say I jumped quite big but Gail the chestnut um he was such a good boy he just point and go um, he wasn't particularly that good at his flying changes um but when I when I would jump popcorn and the 150 one, uh, when I jump popcorn on the one meter 05 jump um with Yasmin Oh yeah, like yeah, like a year ago. Yeah, she told me that um, if you if your if your pony doesn't do flying changes, um, when you're jumping it, you slide the leg that you want it to land on. Basically, you're doing a flying change in the air, so then it will land on that leg. So I tried doing that with Gail, and it actually worked pretty well. So I could land on the right lead because he doesn't do changes. So I was just making life a bit easier for us doing that. Um, because he doesn't do flying changes. Um, but he was about 15-1, I'd say. He's 15-1, bigger boy. I'm so thankful to be riding both of those amazing horses today and to be having a lesson with Edwina Tops. So, and I had two lessons with her. So I just can't believe it. It was a dream come true today. I found it an absolute pleasure that I was able to have a lesson with her. So if you're watching this, Edwina, thank you so much for having me today. And thank you so much for giving me them lessons. And yeah, I just enjoyed it so much today. I'm so grateful and really happy. It was a dream come true. I cannot believe I was in the ring with Edwina and she was teaching me. I'm so, so, I'm on cloud nine, guys. I'm so happy. But we're going to end today's vlog here. Stay tuned for all of the other vlogs that we're going to be doing this holiday. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.